let's now start with study unit 8 and we're going to talk about the analysis and interpretation of financial statements. Now up till now we've been working on preparing financial statements but now what happens when you've got a set of financial statements and you're going to do analysis and get that information to work for you. You're going to do it from two perspectives. Either you're an internal person, a management member, and you're going to use the information for decision making. Or alternatively, you are coming in as an external person, as an investor or provider of capital, a lender, okay, and you're going to analyze the financial statements. We are going to deal with three sets of financial statements, um, analysis tools. The first one is going to be profitability ratios. And that's what this lecture is about. So let's get into profitability ratios. The profitability ratios we will need to learn are return on equity, which is given as a percentage, return on assets, also as a percentage, the gross profit percentage, often known as margin, the profit margin percentage. Then we're going to deal with the financial leverage ratio and the leverage effect. Let's go through each of these one by one. Now, return on equity measures the profitability of the capital investment made by equity owners. That's quite straightforward, and this, to be honest, is probably the most important ratio, in my opinion anyway. The formula here is you will take profit before tax and divide it by total equity. That will give you a fraction, which you will then multiply by 100 to get a percentage. You can learn this and... The profit before tax you will get from the statement of profit or loss and OCI. Total equity you can get from either the statement of financial position or the statement of changes in equity. If it's a CC, the statement of member's interest. Next up, we look at the return on assets, ROA. Now, return on assets measures how effectively the entity's assets are being used to generate profit. So the last one was we've got capital that comes in from equity investors and we're looking at the profitability of those equity investors' investments. Here we're saying the company now has purchased assets and we're looking at how effectively do these assets generate profit. So the formula is profit before interest and tax I take before interest because I'm looking at ignoring the financing costs. And I divide that by total assets. Once again, I get a fraction, so I need to multiply this by 100 to get a return on assets percentage. Learn that formula, please. <clears throat> then we go into the gross profit percentage. And here, GP is a measure of the gross profit earned on sales. And here I want to look at a percentage year after year after year, either comparing my company to prior periods or my company to other businesses. And here it's gross profits over sales. Remember gross profits is revenue minus cost of sales. Okay, so I take that again and times it by 100 to get a GP percentage. Learn that formula as well, very important. Then I need to go one step further and look at my profit margin percentage. Now this doesn't just take into account cost of sales, but all my other expenses such as administration, distribution expenses, etc. So this is a measure of net profit and it tells me how much net profit the entity makes for every one rand of revenue it generates. So here I will take profit before tax divided by sales once again, times by 100 to convert to a percentage, and I get my profit margin percentage. It used to often be called the net profit percentage. Now we're moving away from the profitability ratios, and we're going to look at the financial leverage ratio, and then the financial leverage effect. It's very important conceptually that when we borrow funds, that we use those funds to operate a business, that returns a higher return than the cost of the funds we are borrowing. Okay, so the financial leverage ratio measures the efficiency with which borrowed funds are used. 
That is, are the returns being generated for equity owners higher than the cost of borrowed funds? If not, we have a major problem. So the formula here works out quite nicely. I take my return on equity divided by the return on assets. Those are both percentages, right? Okay, and this will be a figure. And this figure hopefully will be greater than 1 times. If it's less than 1, we've got a problem. But greater than 1 is good. It means we are generating higher returns for our equity investors than the cost of the funds being borrowed. If it's less than 1, we have a problem. So if it's less than 1, we have a problem. Okay, so a leverage ratio greater than 1 indicates that the entity is generating higher returns on the assets than the cost of funds borrowed to purchase them. So higher than 1 is good. It's not a percentage. A very similar kind of measurement is the financial leverage effect. This explains further the equity investors, how much they are benefiting from the use of borrowed funds. And I'm going to take the return on equity percentage minus the return on assets. They will give me a percentage. Okay. Now, a positive figure indicates borrowed funds are being used efficiently and resulting in higher returns to equity owners than the cost of borrowing funds. So a positive over here is good a negative indicates a problem okay so our first set of ratios for profitability ratios very good for measuring the returns of the business okay if these are good figures that we have a nice strong return on equity and return on equity well you're going to look back to what the expected rate of return of investors is return on assets must be positive GP percentage in different industries. I can't give you a, um, a qualitative figure, a quantitative figure and say more than 10% is good, for instance. Here I need to look at my company compared to other companies in the same industry, my company compared to prior periods, etc. Same with the profit margin. Different industries have different profit benchmarks, right? Like you have a pick and pay or spa franchise, they may have huge amounts of turnover but very low profit percentages but then i might have a firm of architects and architects will have very high profit percentages okay different industries and i must compare my business to other businesses in the same industry financial leverage ratio however this is a greater than one is good less than one is bad okay and the same can be said for the financial leverage effect Positive percentage is good, negative percentage is a problem. Profitability ratios done and dusted. Make sure you learn them before you try and apply them. Thank you.